what causes an arc flash? An arc, or crossing of electrical current across a gap, is caused by current flowing between conductors that have become separated. This gap may be caused by insulation that has become compromised due to excessive conductive dust or corrosion. Arcs may also be caused by increased airflow through conductors, accidental touching of charged equipment, by dropping tools into live machinery, or by birds and animals that find their way into energized equipment. Loose connections due to poorly maintained equipment also present a serious hazard. Ever wonder, why is it so dangerous? When thinking of electrical hazards, shock is the first thing that comes to mind. The human body is a good electrical conductor because it is mostly water and water conducts electricity. Much of what is taught about electrical safety is geared toward preventing shock and electrocution. Although arc flash hazards are not new, the dangers associated with arcing faults have recently received special attention because of their frequency in the workplace and the costly destruction they cause to humans and equipment. Estimates state that arc flashes occur in the United States between 5 and 10 times every day. The effects include heat output, thermal radiation, and pressure wave. Here is a little more detail about each effect. First is heat output. Temperatures in excess of 35,000 degrees Fahrenheit, several times hotter than the sun, which is 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, have been recorded during arc flash testing. The intensity of the heat in the blast can melt metal, causing molten shrapnel to explode into the area surrounding the blast. Next, some detail about thermal radiation. The intense heat generated during the explosion causes a fireball to erupt, destroying equipment and igniting the workers' clothing, causing severe burns and or death. Lastly, some information about pressure wave. In the immediate area of the blast, pressure waves of over 2,000 pounds per square foot can propel large equipment and debris into the surrounding area. Pressure that intense can also force a worker off their feet, hurling them into walls, windows, or other hazardous equipment, causing concussions, broken bones, eardrum rupture because of intense sound of over 140 decibels, which is as loud as an airplane taking off, lung damage, blindness, shrapnel injuries, and death. Arcing fault is extremely dangerous because of the sheer speed and intensity of electrical energy that can be released within a fraction of a second. The extent of injury depends on the temperature and duration of the arc and how close a person is to the flash. YouTube has actual footage of arc flash incidents. They are hard to watch, but you should see at least one to confirm the danger for yourself. Next, we'll cover arc flash hazard analysis. We'll start with history of arc flash hazard analysis. In the scope of history, the recognition of arc flash hazards in the workplace is fairly recent. In 1980, Ralph Lee, a former DuPont consultant, published the other electrical hazard, electric arc blast burns, in the IEEE Transactions on Industrial Applications. For years, the main focus of electrical safety was on how to avoid shock. Lee's article brought to light the danger of arc flash incidents and the need for standardized safety procedures and protective equipment. Several companies took notice of Lee's findings, and the petrochemical industry led the way in establishing arc flash safety practices to help protect workers from the hazards of arcing faults. In 2004, the National Fire Protection Association, NFPA, and the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers Incorporated, IEEE, formed a partnership to fund and support arc flash research to better understand how to protect electrical workers from this hazard. 
A greater understanding of the causes of arc flash has led to improvements in electrical safety standards and personal protective equipment requirements. NFPA and IEEE each have separate safety manuals that reinforce each other. The NFPA Standard for Electrical Safety in the Workplace, known as NFPA 70E, is supported by the IEEE 1584 standard for calculating arc flash hazards. Together, these two manuals illustrate how to comply with OSHA arc flash hazard safety standards.